This is a piece that I'm making about the city of Nottingham. Robin is walking in the forest near to where will be the last working windmill in the country. When he spots the sheriff chatting up Maid Marion near to where will be the first onshore oil fields in this country. Robin's not very happy about this, so he aims and fires his bow. The arrow travels across the glade and of course Dave Marion's face comes out laughing. A series of characters then cross the glade. Torval and Dean, who were sponsored by Nottingham. Boots, the chemist, started in Nottingham. Should really have been ladies' boots, because it was a lady that started Boots, the chemist. Rally bicycles are made in Nottingham, and it was a mining history. Not sure if there are any pits left there or not now. A goose from the goose fair. They had their feet dipped in tar and sand alternately. Mine has green wellies. The lovely ladies duo from Yates's Wine Lodge in Nottingham, which was also the home of the Nottingham prostitutes. Their badger office, the handbag open on the table. Brian Clough, always doing a balancing act. Captain Albert Ball, the first Royal Flying Corps VC in the First World War. Players cigarettes made in Nottingham. In fact, the City Art Gallery and Museum, the castle in the background, is their trademark. For the Modern Goose Fair, Lady Chatterley and Mellows. Plus the prettiest girls in the country come from Nottingham. Not forgetting the Salvation Army started in Nottingham. The foliage will be made of Nottingham lace. Coco. This was made for an exhibition about circus. He was a clown who did an incredible long shoe act. His hair stood on end and he squirted water from his eyebrows. I can't do that in a box. So I'm going to have him present a bunch of flowers which is collapsed in his hand and composes when he presents it. Sausage and sardines. Probably one of the only subtle pieces I've ever made, if not the only subtle piece. It was great fun doing the surreal table and plate. My cat is called Sausage and this is him weighing up his possible supper. If I were to do it again I'd have the tip of his tail just flicking gently. It was a lot of fun, even the carpet was great to make. I really enjoyed this.
Schooner House. This piece depicts the first scene from Dylan Thomas's Under Milkwood, where the blind retired sea captain, Captain Cat, is asleep in his bunk in his cottage and is visited by his old shipmates and girlfriends. The poem mentions the fishing boat bobbing sea through the window and Heron Head where girls go to be lonely. Remember me, Captain. I, your dancing Williams. I lost my step in Nantucket. Do you see me, Captain? I'm Tom Fred, the donkeyman. We shared the same girl once. Her name was Mrs. Probert. Rosie Probert, 33 Duck Lane. Come on up, boys, I'm dead. Jonah Jarvis, come to a bad end. Very enjoyable. Tell my missus, no I never. Alfred Pomeroy Jones, sea lawyer, born in Mumbles, sung like a linnet, crowned you with a flagon, tattooed with mermaids, thirst like a dredger, Died of blisters. Never done what she said, I never. This skull at your ear hole is Curly Bevan. Tell my auntie it was me that pawned the Ormolu clock. Aye, aye, Curly. Who brings coconuts and shawls to my Gwen now? How's it above? Is there rum and lava bread? Bosoms and robins, fighting and onions, tiddlers in the jam jar. Buttermilk and whippets, sparrows and daisies, and old girls in the snug. How's the tenors in Dowlice? What's the smell of parsley? When she smiles, is there dimples? The litigants, based on an old drawing which I've never actually seen, depicting two peasants fighting over the ownership of a cow while a lawyer milks it. The old bailey in the background I've brought justice off the top of the old bailey to observe the proceedings. Uh, she keeps taking a peek, the scales go one way then the other as the thing goes ahead. It's manual operation. The locust feet patter to and fro. They fight over the cow. Periodically he pops up and winks and pops down again. The man in the loo. I had to make this crazy cam arrangement to operate this piece because no matter how good instructions you give, people will not follow them.
and of course all outdoor loos had a tin bath on one side, a bike frame on the other and a cat asleep on the roof. Whoops. And the mechanism closes the door. The tamer. One of the best ideas I've ever had. Um, I wanted two decorative characters to interact and this is one of the few that I've thought of right from the beginning. I have nightmares that I'll never have a better idea again. Tamer cracks his whip. The tiger refuses. Again he cracks his whip and the tiger refuses. Again he cracks his whip. The tiger accepts and does its trick. The cow, I've always loved the way cows stick their tongues up their nostrils. This one dispenses oxo cubes and winks on the return stroke. I have a huge collection of things around a Victorian cartoon character. Well, an illustrated paper was around his name, Ali Sloper. The paper was Ali Sloper's Half Holiday. He was always doing something quite outrageous on the cover. In this edition, he's standing for Parliament. There were hundreds of things made around him. He was a very, very popular folk hero of the time. Cast iron doorstop. Tobacco jar. Pub water jug. Goss china. Commemoratives, a beautiful brass Vesta case, that's a matchbox, a briar pipe head, and clay pipes. And the magazine gave away pocket watches. They gave four a week away. Here's a piece that I'm making about Ali Sloper. <clears throat> I've made unicyclists before, but I've never been able to make one where the legs go right round the pedals. Here is eminence on a unicycle. Periodically dots his hat and takes a swig at the bottle. It's all wood except for the coat tails and his hat 
which I made out of papier mache so they were light and we can get the lovely flowing coat tails. His brolly was in fact a shoplifting aid. He was quite a wicked sort of character. Handicap but more so. The Langdale Axe Factory. This was made for an exhibition about the Lake District. I used to climb in the Langdale Valley where there is a Stone Age Axe Factory. It's quite a strange sensation to be in a place where some thousands of years ago um, men produced axes. I'd seen an exhibition at the British Museum that said axes from this particular factory had been found all over Europea, Europe and the Mediterranean. So I presumed that um, these lads should have had the Queen's Award for Industry. When you pull the axe hanging from the bottom rhythmically They work away with their axes. When you pull the axe more firmly, Queen Bodicea shoots up in the chariot, waving the Queen's Award for Export banner, and their eyes go up to her.